We previously discussed that stable diffusion is an open source model, meaning you can access the weights, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, what we might not mention is actually the data set that Stable Fusion was trained on is also open source. Uh, it's a training set called Leon 5B. And you'll see here that it is a large multi scale modal data set uh, with both image and text pairings. And the 5B stands for 5 billion. There are apparently 5 billion images in this data set. Um, so this is actually how. Uh, Stable Fusion was trained. Um, and the nice thing is, again, because it's open source, we can actually access that data. Uh, we're going to look at a tool called haveibeentrained.com. Um, it's from Matt Dryhurst and uh, Holly Herndon. Um, and they're, uh, what is it, Swarmed like project, I think is what it's called. Um, so what does Have I Been Trained on do? Well, let's go ahead and enter a phrase. So first off, um, it basically is, allows you to search the entire uh, Leon 5B data set. So let's go ahead and type in Pablo Picasso. And let's spell it correctly. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and search the data set and show us what images have been pulled into the training data. So why might we use this? Uh, sorry, the, the Holly Herndon and Matt Dry Harris project is called Spawning. I don't know where I got swarming from. Um, but so for them, this is a way that maybe individual artists can opt out of their data, right? So you go ahead and say, like, I don't want my images in these data sets anymore. Going forward, I would prefer you not include me. People could then opt into this with spawning and say, like, hey, leave me out of these in the future. Whether or not other teams accept that or respect that is up to them. Uh, but from their perspective, this is a little bit of like, hey, am I included in this work? So uh, you could go ahead and type in, if you're an artist, you go ahead and type in your work. Um, I typed in my name before and it did not show up at all, which I guess is good. I don't know, maybe not. Um, but this is an opportunity for you to also sort of search and see, well, what images are in here that may be influencing my outputs? So you'll see an interesting part of this is when I type in Pablo Picasso, you get a lot of portraits and photos of Picasso. And only later on do you really get data or his particular piece of art, right? So if you were to maybe, like you would think, maybe if I were to type in just Pablo Picasso and do a stable fusion, we can do that in a minute, um, I might just get out images of Picasso. And for a couple of reasons we'll get into in just a minute, that isn't always true. Um, but a funny thing you'll also notice here, like this is something I just noticed, um, this particular image is quite clearly um, an image of Picasso that has been run through style transfer. So one of the challenges, as we've talked about, or like as some theorists have started to argue, is like we're just going to end up artificial data is going to influence future data sets. Um, so, you know, there is some argument to be made that 5 billion images is a lot, but we probably need to do some cleanup of it. And uh, there actually have been some some projects that, and even the, st the stable fusion itself is not using the entire 5 billion images. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so really interesting with Pablo Picasso. Uh, one thing I was interested in is there's a, a famous filmmaker, or famous to me at least, by the name of Jordan Belson. Um, his work is largely kept out of uh, the public sphere for various reasons. And sure enough, when I search Jordan Belson's name, uh, none of his work shows up. So this is an argument that is probably like, hey, if I were to go into uh, Stable Fusion and type in uh, a frame from a Jordan Belson film, uh, I would not get anything out of it. Very likely. Highly, highly likely, I would say. I don't know who all these people are. I guess they're all people named Jordan Belson. Um, similarly, you know, so I was just going through filmmakers that I like. So I noticed uh, if I typed in Stan Brackage and spelled their name right. Again, you'll see it's a lot of book covers, um, maybe some frames from from his work, but in a lot of cases, it's really just um, you know images of him. So we're kind of seeing this this you know continuing problem of maybe when we talk when we look for artists, we're mostly getting out artist names. Let's go ahead and type in the famous Greg Rutkowski. And here we start to see, well, maybe why the, the reason why Greg Rutkowski works so well is uh, a lot of his images are in here and there aren't any photos of him. So we're starting to see a little bit about, you know, oh, this is why Stable Diffusion does the things it, it does, because the data that it is being trained on have certain influences on it. 
Uh, another thing I noticed, and I'm just going to quickly go on here as we talk about um, ethics, I typed in Maya Darren's name. Uh, Maya Darren, another famous uh, filmmaker. It is all photos of them as an artist. Um, so maybe we could say artists of a certain era tend to just have photos of them uh, included in here, and that tends to bias the data set toward making faces of them. Um, maybe it's also uh, a feminist issue. I would not be surprised if a lot of female artists are mostly presented as um, how attractive they are uh, versus you know um, their work themselves. That would not be surprising to me and would certainly influence the data set in a lot of ways. So let's go ahead and let's just pull up Hugging Face. Um, we'll pull up Stable Effusion 1.4. And sorry, I want the, um, the space. So let's go ahead and just enter in Pablo Picasso. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, based on the data set that I saw, I should just get out an image of him, right? Because that's really what I saw most of. So let's see what we get. So sure enough, look at this. My first image is Pablo Picasso, and the other two images, or the other three images, God, I can't count today. The other three images are actually, you know, more or less works by Pablo Picasso. Let's say I really only wanted to get works by Pablo Picasso and didn't want to get faces, um, you know, portraits of him. What could I do? Well, one thing is I could say painting Pablo Picasso. Let's see what that does. And sure enough, I get you know different images out. Uh, one th one trick that I've seen is just if you just say buy the artist, you tend to get out the artist's work. There you go. So uh, let's try this with Maya Darren. Sure enough, I get a lot of photos of a Maya Darren lookalike, but let's try by Maya Darren. And I'm still getting all these, so let's try an experimental film. So we're starting to see that, you know, Picasso, lots of paintings, lots of cubist images of, of Picasso work very easily to get access to that. With Maya Darren, we're struggling a lot more here. We are mostly just being given images of her face. And again, if we look through the training data, that kind of makes sense. Um, maybe Picasso is actually a bigger issue than um, it should be. Maybe again, it's a feminism, male versus female artist issue, who knows for sure. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will mention is someone mentioned to me, the newer versions of Stable Diffusion um, also filter out images based on what they call aesthetic score, meaning if they think the images are not aesthetic enough, not beautiful enough, they're actually kept out of the training data. So I believe 1.3 started that and 1.4 continued that along. Um, what that might mean, again, is that maybe more portraits of Pablo Picasso or these portraits of whoever this, these Jordan Belsons are um, is being kept out of the data set, but Maya Darren being a quote-unquote attractive woman is being kept in because the aesthetic score ranks it highly. A um, whole bunch of ethical issues there around like what is an, what is an aesthetic score, how are we determining what aesthetic scores are, 
if you believe that is an issue, uh, it definitely is. Um, I believe it's actually one of the things I didn't really show in any Stan Brakhage experiments here, but I believe some of Stan Brakhage's films are being kept out of there probably because they look like noise and not like a highly aesthetic image. So again, Sable Fusion is trying to reach realism and in, in, in that way they might be excluding images that are not realistic or not beautiful enough to meet some, some, some level of, you know, believability of, of, a, of a, a good aesthetic in terms of generating images. Um, so starting to get into the ethical quagmire of these issues. But I still think, I think Have I Been Trained On is a great tool. One, because I think it's important that artists do understand if their images are in their in these data sets or not. And should have some level of, you know, ability to say I do or do not want my work in here. But I also think this tool is a great interface just for searching, right? So we get searched, like let's say, um, I've been doing a lot of micro photography. So let's say micro photography. Let's see what we get back. Now I have a certain visual idea of what micro photography looks like to me. Uh, and look at this, I don't get any micro photography back, I get macro photography back. And I get lots of book covers. And you'll see here, there are a lot of ugly images in here. So I bet if I were to look at the Lion 5B, um, I would definitely uh, probably want to delete a lot of these. So, you know, it says it's trained on 5 billion images. I don't know what that actual result is. I don't know if they've released the, the stats to say how many images are kept out of the training set in order to make this, uh, you know, more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but I'd be interested to see how many of these... It does give back a source as well, so you can also go and check out where the source is from. Um, you'll see a lot of slide decks, those sort of things. Um, so let's try something else. Let's try thin slice photography. And I still don't see any of the images I want. So here again, uh, this is kind of telling me that if I'm looking for a certain type of image and I'm not seeing what I put in this text in this uh, as a search result, it might not be the best text phrase for me to look up. So it's really important to sort of understand, like, you know, what was the data set? How was this trained? What, how did the data set and its data, meaning the text pairs with the image pairs, how did that influence the output of this data? So if I'm looking for thin slice photography and I don't get back those images, that probably means that there's not a lot of data in the data set to help support this phrase, meaning I might need to go find a different phrase that actually matches up with the images I want in order to use that phrase for my next text prompt. So let's try one more search. Let's search experimental film. So see here, uh, lots of book covers. This is a good book, by the way, this is Catherine Raymond's book, if anyone's interested. Uh, not a lot of film frames, not a lot of actual images of experimental films. Um, you'll see a lot of slide decks, maybe images of filmmakers, but not a lot of actual films. Maybe that's because the data sets they're pulling from or the images they're scraping from uh, are not, you know, experimental films. You'll turn, it turns out a lot of experimental film is not online, so you will not get images for it. Um, this is one of the challenges of these tools or like learning about how the data was scraped, you will find that you are limited in your output because there isn't enough data. Um, this is what I think is really great about Have I Been Trained On, is it shows you uh, what data is already in the data set, how that influenced your images, and what is a constraint within your actual text prompting. So I would definitely recommend checking out Have I Been Trained. Um, maybe give it a shot, see if your work is in there or see if some other work um, that you're interested in producing is in there and maybe learn a little bit about how uh, the data set influences stable diffusion. All right, so hope you enjoy haveitbeentrained.com.